The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 725. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is the host of the Dateable Podcast, and I'm really excited to have her on and share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Yue Shu. Yue, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Hi, Sheena. Thanks so much for the introduction. Yeah, I... Thanks so much for having me on the show. I've basically been in the entertainment business for a very long time, creating content, and I feel like that's where my passion lies. But I've had also many lives in my career. I started out as a consultant. I went into advertising. I quit all that when I turned 25 had my quarter life crisis and became a TV host in New York. And after being in New York for seven years, I moved to Beijing on a whim and hosted Uh, several TV shows there, both in Mandarin and in English, and then moved to San Francisco about four years ago and have been kind of pursuing the tech industry in terms of reporting on tech and creating content about tech, but also working in tech. And along the way, one thing has never changed is my interest in dating and relationships and how humans connect with each other. And that's when I started the Dateable Podcast when I first moved to San Francisco, really just creating a candid and open conversation about dating. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Yue, what's your cultural background? I am Chinese. Thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? It is. I don't, I wish I could give credit. I don't know who said this, but it is, if you want something you've never had, then you've got to do something you've never done. Thanks for sharing that great quote. And I totally agree. Like you're going to have to do something totally different if you want a different outcome. So thanks for sharing that great quote. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? I would say self-confidence is having enough, having enough self-awareness to know where you can work on more, so opportunities for improvement, but also acknowledging how far you've come. And it's just acknowledging yourself on a journey. It's not a destination of, oh, now I've arrived at a point where I'm very self-confident. I think it's an iterative journey, and just acknowledging that is self-confidence enough. Thanks for sharing that great definition. And Yue, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? (laughs) I think I'm still discovering my self-confidence, but I would say when I was a teenager, and I guess that's where most people go through kind of the ups and downs of their own self-discovery, I think I was just very lost in terms of not just being a teenager, but also being, I moved to the States when I was eight years old and I didn't know anybody. We didn't know anybody. It was a completely different culture. I didn't know the language. And when I became a teenager, I mean, if you think about it, I started my childhood in the U.S. as an eight-year-old. So I like to think of myself as eight years behind everybody else. So I spent all this time catching up and just wanting to fit in, wanting to assimilate. But I lost part of who I really was, my culture, my roots. And I think I really discovered self-confidence was when I was accepting of who I was born into and not letting go of that, not getting lost in just trying to fit in. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, it's not always easy when you migrate to a different country where, like, sometimes you're the only Asian kid in the area. And, like, yeah, like you mentioned, you want to assimilate to the culture, but at the same time, you still want to hold on to, you know, your culture and your roots. And, you know, it was that point in your life when you realize you can go out there, especially, you know, with what you've been through, going through many changes in your life, having that confidence to always do something different. What was that, like, aha moment? The aha moment was I had been in New York for seven years in the entertainment industry where you are always looking for a yes, but you know 99.9% of the time you're getting a no. And you've had other guests on the show who have always been also been in the industry who've experienced the same. And for a long time, I thought about how do I keep persevering? How do I keep going and 
be accepting of the no's. And it was the aha moment was when I came to the realization, it's not about accepting the no's. It's about how you deal with the no's. What can you learn from the no's? How can you keep this journey going in terms of personal self-development? So my ultimate aha moment wasn't about brushing it aside or picking myself back up and saying, I can do this. It was more about, okay, let's step back and realize my truth. My truth is I'm upset. I'm sad. I'm disappointed. That was a no. That was a no of rejection. Where do I feel it in my body? And then what can I learn from this? That's where we grow and that's where we change. Thanks for sharing that. And I love how you explain how you deal with the no's because you know, rejection always sucks. Nobody likes it. But like you mentioned, we get way more no's than yeses. And, you know, when we can see it in a different way, and like you mentioned, how can we learn from it and kind of step back and see, you know, the big picture, it does, you know, it does help us realize like, you know, sometimes it's okay if we get no's, you know, it's not the end of the world, we can keep moving forward, we can learn from that experience and, you know, tweak it a little bit, no no matter what happens, right? So I, I really love that you mentioned that. And because of that, what's your life been like now? Life is, I think I just, you know, I feel like the older I get, the more I feel like I don't know. I felt like in my early 20s, I felt absolutely invincible. Like I was on top of the world. I I knew everything and I've reached like the peak. And now as I get older, I realize the world is just full of unknowns and that is okay. It's the unknowns. That's where we grow and that's where we we progress. And so my life now is a constant school. I feel like every day I'm going to class and just learning about the things that I don't know. Thanks for sharing. Then I love how you mentioned like, yeah, you know, as you know, dealing with the unknown, especially as Asian, you know, people like or Asian families, nobody likes, we don't like it, right? (laughs) We always need to have like that stable paycheck, you know, that path that we've been taught and programmed all our lives to live. And so when we step out of that, it's like something's wrong with us, or, you know, it's the end of the world. But like you mentioned, the unknown could be the greatest thing in the world if you see it that way. Um, If you see that there could be something magical that can happen, something wonderful can happen, you never know what opportunities might come your way. And, you know, I think if we can just remind more people about the unknown being good versus bad, it can really help them in their own journey and realize like, you know, it's part of the process. So thanks for sharing that again. And if a woman's listening to your episode and she's in her own journey to self-confidence, what'd be that one tip you'd give to her? I love this discussion, Sheena, because you bring up something very important. As part of the Asian culture, I think, especially women, we feel like we have these milestones we have to hit and we have to hit them in a timely manner. And if we don't, we don't we're no longer these model minorities that we're supposed to be. And one of the downfalls with it, with the Asian community is that we're constantly comparing, right? Our parents are comparing their kids. We're comparing our lives. And we keep thinking that we're supposed to be at the same pace, the same race, this, you know, kind of like the same universe almost, but we're not, we're all doing our own race here. We're just competing with ourselves right now. And we just, we become like these hamsters in a hamster wheel, just trying to, trying to get to these milestones and accomplish them. So the one tip I would give anyone is know that you're on your own journey and your previous guests have said the same. And I think it's the most brilliant realization I've had. You're on your own journey, but Going forward, it's not about just knowing who you are because we take all these personality tests. You know, we're like, oh, I'm this kind of personality and I, my love language is this. But the most important part of that process is what do you do with that knowledge? If you know your personality now, if you know your love language, if you know your attachment style, what do you do with that information? Do you want to be this person? Or is there another person you want to be that you would like to evolve into? And that's where the journey really evolves. And that's where the meat of it is. Thanks for sharing that great tip. And you know, I think it's it's always a great reminder, because especially as Asian people, the compare game is always so strong. And we just have to realize like, we are all on our own journey, we're all different. And we really just got to stop comparing ourselves to others. So thanks for sharing that. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do or check out some of your work, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Sure. You can just go on my website. It's yuexu.com. It's just my full name.com. And I post quite a bit on Instagram. My handle, don't laugh, it's non-platonic because I believe in living a very non-platonic life. 
that nothing should ever be platonic. You shouldn't feel like it's just platonic. There should be a little bit of edge, a little bit oomph to it. So it's at non-platonic. Awesome and great Instagram name. Thanks for sharing that. And and to our listeners, if you want to connect with Yue, you can also head on over to the TaoSelfConfidence.com and search for Yue's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I really just want to thank Yue today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Yue. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll leave you with one a last discovery I've had. And this discovery comes, it's called rejection therapy. And it's something that was brought to light by one of our Asian brothers. His name is Jia Jiang. And he wrote a book called 100 Days of Rejection. And now he's a TED speaker. But his, his whole theory is if you look for the nose, if you're looking for rejection, then you desensitize yourself from it. And it's a fabulous book. And definitely listen to his talks. It's, it's life changing. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. I'll have to check that book out. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Want to learn how you can use podcasting to market your business? Download your free report by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.